Welcome to the course. This is a course for low energy building, um, Shore Energy Taku, and my name is Mark Brady. So, I'd like in this course to talk about um, first of all, well, here are three questions we're going to be looking at over the next few weeks. Um, the first question is, um, what is a low energy building. Uh, we're doing a course on low energy building, so I'm just going to talk a bit today about what that actually means. And um, next, I'm going to talk about the question of why. Why should we think about low energy buildings? And the next question is a more simple question. What is energy? And we'll be looking at these questions today and over the next few weeks over this course. So first of all, let's just think about um, low energy, low energy buildings. And there are different ideas about what a low energy building is. Uh, for example, um, we may think about low embodied energy. Uh, these are uh, uh, teepees. Um, used in America and they're, they're relatively light. They're made with materials you can pick up and walk around. So there's uh, no concrete, no steel, no aluminium. To make them uses a small amount of energy. Another example we may think about is uh, is the uh, the igloo used in the nor north, in the, around the North Pole. Um, in many different places around the North Pole. This one, I think, is from Canada, uh, what is now Canada. Uh, and this is a very um, low-energy structure. The igloo is made from ice, which is literally dug from underneath where the igloo is being built. They're also um, relatively warm buildings for a very cold place. Uh, so this is another idea. This may be, you could say this is a low energy building. Uh, often people think about when they hear low energy or eco house, they'll think of something like this. Um, I'm not sure if this is a low energy building. Um, I guess here's an empty house. Nobody lives there. <laughs> It's not using any any electricity, not using any gas. So I guess you could say this is a low energy building. Um, another thing that we see a lot recently is um, let's stick as many solar panels on the roof as we can. And now um, we have a low energy building. Or do we? Uh, I, I think most of these are not really low energy buildings, or they're not the low energy buildings that we're going to talk about. What I think low energy means is low energy by design. So it's a building that is comfortable, that works well, that people want to live in, and that are nice to live in, but they use little energy, not because there's nobody there, and not... Um, because they're generating elect if they're generating electricity, then that's not low energy. That becomes high energy because they're producing a lot of energy. Um, TPs and igloos are great. I'd love to teach about those, but um, that's not unfortunately what we're going to talk about. What um, what I would say this is a, a low energy building um, in Japan, and it kind of just looks like a normal house. Um, these are some low energy buildings from the UK. Again, they look pretty much like normal UK houses. Um, here is an American low energy building. And uh, here is a, a low energy building from Germany. All, all of these buildings, I would say, are low energy uh, because they're designed to work and to be comfortable without using lots of energy. Um, next. So, why? Why low energy buildings? Why should we worry about low energy buildings? 
Um, and very simply, um, we should worry because we're using a lot of energy and we're using more energy every year. And this is um, most of this energy, if you look at it, most of it is coal and oil and gas. And coal recently seems to have peaked. So we seem to have reached a maximum uh, two or three years ago. Um, but that doesn't mean that we're not using coal anymore. We're still burning lots and lots of coal. Um, Japan burns lots of coal. And other countries, it's still lots of coal is burning. We're using more oil. We're using more gas. Um, all of this burns and... Well, two things. First of all, if we burn it, it's gone and it's not there anymore. Nobody else can use that coal. Nobody can use that oil. Nobody can use that gas. And those have been there for a very long time. They're, they're called fossil fuels. And fossils take millions of years to make and they stay in the ground for millions of years. And we're burning them. Um, that's bad in itself. They're also producing carbon dioxide, and as we know, carbon dioxide is not good for the climate. So it's getting warmer, we're getting more typhoons, more weather. Um, another thing that's kind of related, I think, to this is just the number of humans and the number of extinctions. And this is a similar, um, this is not directly connected to energy use. But at the same time as we're using more and more energy, there's also more and more people and there are also more and more animals which are gone forever. Uh, and all of this is connected to energy. Uh, in Japan, about 90% of energy used in Japan is imported. So we're getting coal from other countries into Japan. We're using oil from other countries. Nuclear power also is used in Japan. That comes from other countries. Um, and of the energy that's used in Japan, something like 30 or 40 percent is used in houses and buildings. So if we can make buildings use less energy, then we will use less energy. That means less coal, less oil, less carbon dioxide. Um, so that's one 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 way to think. Um, now Buildings for a long time have used fossil fuels or have used energy. Um, and there are some new things we need to think. We need to think differently about the way that buildings work and what buildings do. So I, I think we need buildings that don't use fossil fuels, that don't use kerosene, don't use coal, don't use oil. Uh, we need to use we have technology to insulate to keep the buildings warm we've got windows now uh, there are very high performance windows um, and we can use ventilation which all of these i'll talk about over the course um, humans now just just the way that humans um, we use we use a lot of energy as humans and most of it we need and we need to eat but most of the energy we're using is not energy that we're eating. We use about 20 times more energy for moving around, for building, for heating, um, all of these things. So we're not very efficient and we're kind of addicted to oil. Um, if you switch off the oil, then um, lots of people panic. I think this is, I hope this is changing. I think we need to change. So buildings are one way that we can change. Um, so that's one one reason why to think about low energy buildings is to use less energy to cut down. Um, next thing is just simple economics um, and energy costs money. So if you're building a house or if you're building a building that uses lots of energy, that uses lots of stuff to heat or even cool in the summer, then that's costing more money. And if you can build a house that does not use lots of energy, then it's going to be cheaper. Um, there's an issue of um, what's called fuel poverty. And fuel poverty is when 
um, people don't have enough money to stay warm. And what this can mean is if people have a limited amount of money, they may be renting, so they have to pay their rent for their house. They need to pay for fuel. They need to pay for food. Um, and if people don't have enough money, then they need to decide, do I get, do I pay for rent? Do I pay for food? Do I pay for heating? Um, and often people won't pay for heating. And if they don't pay for heating, they may end up getting sick. And if they get sick, they can't work. And often um, people are staying in council houses. So the local government, they're paying rent to the local government. And often if people get sick, then the hospitals need to be covered. Um, that's also a social cost. Um, so in fact, if you can make low energy houses for social housing, then it means people don't need to worry about heating bills. So people don't have to pay lots of money for heating. So we don't have this some um, we don't have the problem. Next thing um, is uh, comfort. Now, low energy buildings will usually be more comfortable. Uh, in a low energy building, you have higher insulation. This means the temperature is more constant. You don't get drafts. You don't get bits of cold air blowing in. You don't get condensation or mold. So a, a low energy building is also a comfortable building. So that, those are that's three reasons why we want to talk about low energy building, uh, reducing energy, uh, economics, making it cheaper and comfort. So a low energy building should be better for the environment. It should be better for our pockets. We don't need to spend so much money and also better for our health and more comfortable and nicer to live in. Um, so the basic plan, the more detailed plan for this course then, is um, first of all looking at the question what is energy, which we'll start looking at next week. Uh, then we'll start looking at buildings and how do buildings lose energy and how does energy move around within buildings. Um, and we'll later look at um, standards and regulations and then I hope we'll have time to look at the future and what we can do in the future. Um, so uh, before we go on with the course I'd like to just check your mathematics. Now if we are going to make low energy buildings, if we are going to save the planet and help the environment then we need mathematics and the mathematics is mostly not very difficult, but I, I'm just going to show you the level of maths that we need for this course. And there are a few, um, there'll be a few uh, problems I'd like you to look at. Um, so first of all, I'm, I, I'm, as you may notice, I'm, I'm speaking English, and these are a few mathematical expressions in English. Um, so uh, that's equals plus minus times divided by and or over we can also say. So first of all here's a first problem for you. So if um, a plus b equals x plus y um, which of these is true? Uh, that's um, a plus b equals x plus y. Which one of those is true? Uh, is it the same as a plus y equals x plus b? Is it the same as a plus x equals b plus y? Is it the same as a minus y equals x minus b? Or a minus x equals b minus y? Um, next. How about this? a equals x over y. Which one of these is the same? Which one of the below four? has the same meaning. Um, answers for homework. Next question. Um, if you can ride your bicycle at 20 kilometers per hour, 
then uh, how long will it take you to travel two kilometers? And next question, how far can you go in 20 minutes? Um, answers for homework. Um, this is the level of, this is, we're going to be looking later at some questions which need us to do some maths. And if you can do this, you'll have no problem. Um, next one then. Um, a plus B squared equals A squared plus B squared. 2 times A plus B equals 2A plus 2B. 2 to the power of A plus B equals 2A plus 2 to the power of A plus 2 to the power of B. The square root of A plus B equals the square root of A plus the square root of B. Which one of these is correct? Which one is true? Um, that's how I would say these in English. Um, A plus B squared equals A squared plus B squared. 2A plus B equals 2A plus 2B. 2 to the power A plus B equals 2 to the power A plus 2 to the power B. Uh, root A plus B equals root A plus root B. Uh, next one. Um, 1 over X equals 1 over A plus 1 over B. Uh, which of these is that the same as? And uh, so, yeah, answers for homework, please. And um, if you find, if you can get through this, if you can get through these maths questions, then you'll be fine going through the course. But there will be some maths. It's, this is not a maths lesson. Um, but as I said, we do need to do some maths. Um, so um, next question is for you to think about um, where does a house use energy? Uh, where does a house lose energy? Um, where does a house gain energy? So we need to think about energy, energy use, energy losing and energy gaining. Um, next, this is a, this is a very, a very rough um, plan for the uh, course, which um, is I'll, I'll put this up on the course that you can read later. Um, and probably, this is a tentative plan, probably this will change. But I'll try to cover all of these things. Um, in the, the, I hope you will give a presentation if you join the class. The presentation will be in the one of the last two or three lessons. Um, Probably we won't have time to talk about these things. Um, we won't have time to talk about heating and cooling, hot water, um, other things that use lots of energy. Um, calculation, we will talk about some calculation, but simulation, measurement. One thing that's very important for low energy building is what do we do with old buildings and how do we make old buildings better for energy use and I probably won't have time to talk about that and there are many other crazy ideas uh, which I hope we can talk about some crazy ideas. Um, hopefully then this course you will learn um, the, the, main, the main idea behind this course is physics and how physics applies to buildings. I also hope we'll look at problem solving. So how do we, we, we have problems, we have to deal with problems. How do we find solutions to those problems? Um, one other thing is um, what's called guesti guesstimation, which I'll talk about later. Um, guesstimation is sometimes when we're calculating, we don't need an exact calculation. We just need a rough answer and we need a quick answer. And that's, I call that guesstimation, which is halfway between estimation and guessing. Um, and the other thing, I, I'm, as you may notice, um, I'm speaking English. I plan to speak in English 
throughout the course. Uh, you can speak, you can talk in Japanese. If you have questions, uh, you can ask questions in Japanese. Um, there'll hopefully be opportunities for you to talk to other students. And again, I don't mind if you speak in Japanese or in English. Uh, some of the slides later, I will add some Japanese um, to help uh, with some of the ideas and some of the concepts. Um, but I basically, I'm going to speak English. So this is also a chance for you to, to practice listening to English and hopefully to learn some English. Um, so, uh, that's all. Uh, good luck and see you later.